So with that, um, I thought it might be good to really start with you know, setting the stage and really get a get an idea from each of you all on what are the types of conflicts of interest that you all are covering in your program, and then who do you uh, apply that to in the organization? Is it across the organization or just certain certain you know portions of the of the organization that you all apply your programs to? You know, the healthcare industry is heavily regulated, so a lot of the conflicts that we manage um, partly deal with what the government focuses on. So there's a, a law called the, the Open Payments Law or the Sunshine Act that uh, medical device and pharmaceutical companies have to disclose anything over $10 uh, that they provide to a, uh, a healthcare uh, provider or teaching hospital or physician. Um, that law is being expanded to other types of uh, healthcare providers in addition to physicians uh, over the next year. So that plays a large part of it, but we really look at conflicts altogether. We never wanna have an appearance of a conflict. So we have all of our employees um, prior, to employee, uh, prior to employment, complete a conflict of interest disclosure form. And then we provide annual training and have obligations on certain individuals to fill out an annual form um, each year. Um, we do that with all of our physicians. Um, that will be increased to certain types of clinicians based upon this new law. But we, anybody that's also in a kind of a, a management level position as well, we have um, also complete an annual form. And then certain departments, so the procurement department, the legal department, the compliance department, there's various departments uh, where we have everybody in those departments complete uh, an annual disclosure form as well. So uh, that gives you a little bit of insight on how we approach the issue. But uh, in addition to those other laws uh, that, that regulate our industry, we're really interested in all types of conflicts and we have some very broad questions um, to address those as well. Karen, Jim? I can sure. jump in here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we we apply it to all team members. Uh, we we actually send out. We have yearly training um, that includes our code of conduct. Um, we do not actually have uh, to specifically go into Greg's comment. We don't have a disclosure form. Um, it has been discussed, but we actually feel that we feel very comfortable with our code of conduct and our yearly training and certifications that we get that all team members are, are uh, provided this information. We also provide our uh, code of conduct, which includes conflicts of interest, directly to our owners when they do their certifications to us, um, as well as uh, that's provided to our vendors as well. So we just make sure that you know everyone who works with us understands the, the brand that we are and our values that we have and, um, and understands the expectations as well. Um, so for, for, for Capital One, um, similar to what, what Greg said at the outset of his comments, we're, we're in a highly regulated industry um, and we do have um, particular requirements uh, depending on the particular line of business where the the conflicts disclosure requirements are, you know, maybe more specific and, and, and more involved and less discretionary. Um, our, our conflicts policy, our program applies to all of our employees up to and including our board of directors who are, are covered by our, our code of conduct. Um, and I think as, as Karen and, and Greg said, really at the end of the day, it's about a reflection of the values and sort of the integrity and you know, what you want your company to stand for. And certainly our conflicts program is a big part of that. Um, we very much, you know, part of our communication strategy is, you know, we want people to err on the side of disclosing. If you have a, a doubt, um, we also look at, you know, uh, situations that could be perceived as a conflict. And it's in, important to kind of come to our ethics office and sort of get some guidance and err on the side of disclosing. Um, and I think the way we really focus on that is, you um, being sure that folks feel like they've gotten treated reasonably. So we encourage more disclosure because they know if they come, it's going to be thoughtful, reasonable, hopefully timely as well. Um, and that, you know, if there's a way that uh, people can do things that's consistent with our, our values and the code of conduct, we, we can, you know, find ways of, of ensuring that they're the right kinds of mitigation or other things in place uh, if, there, if there is a, a potential conflict. 